Greetings and welcome back. Um, so, uh, this Code Along notebook will take us through how to produce some simple baseline forecasts uh, that we can use um, as comparators to any more sophisticated techniques we might bring in. Um, so in particular we're going to take a look at uh, Naive Forecast 1 and Seasonal Naive. Um, so we've got some standard imports, pandas, numpy, uh, matplotlib. Um, now we're also going to use forecast tools. Um, you will have installed this through the Conda environment, but if you are running this notebook through Google Colab, you'll need to install it each time you run it. Um, so the way to do that is uh, to uncomment this line here, pip install forecast tools and run it. Um, you'll see my uh, computer will tell me that my requirement is already satisfied, which is a nice position to be in. So uh, if you're on Colab, that will install that for you very quickly. It's very lightweight software um, and that will install almost instantaneously. Uh, and then we've got a helper function. Don't worry about this. This is just something I've put in um, to help us plot things a little bit quicker with a little less code. So you can make use of that and you'll see where that comes in later. Okay, so down to business. Um, so we're gonna work with an emergency department uh, arrival data set. Uh, and this data set um, uh, represents adults uh, age 18 years and over. And it's at the daily level, and it's between January 2017 and December 2017, so a year. Um, and there, uh, this is this is a simulated data set, so very very similar um, to what you would see in the real world. Very similar indeed, but with a slight difference and a random component to it. So uh, let's read that in. Okay, so we've got our first date is the, uh, actually it's the 22nd of um, January 2017 through to the 31st of December 2017. Have a look at the shape, uh, so it's 344 days. Let's take a quick look at this time series. So here we go at the daily level, uh, we can see there are some spikes within the time series, um, some highs and some lows, some peaks and troughs. Um, however, it's not that clear what the patterns are, so you may want to explore that at a more detailed level. Um, but we're going to go straight ahead and just look how you apply naive forecasting methods to this data. So a popular baseline forecast method, as we've already discussed, is Naive Forecast 1. Uh, that has a flat forecast function. What it does is it takes the last observed value, the last ground truth that you have, and it extrapolates that forward. So if your last value is 10, then all forecasts, no matter how far you go into the future, will also have the value 10. So Forecast Tools provides that uh, naive implementation in a class called naive1. It's really simple to use, we just need to create an instance of the class um, and then we call the fit method, passing in our training data, our historical data, and then we call our predict method. And the predict method was going to return a numpy array containing our forecast over whatever horizon we've put in. So for example, if we go for 28 days, that's going to return a NumPy array of length 28. So let's um, import Naive1 from forecasttools.baseline. Um, so to create it, um, one step. So just create a class called Naive1. So you just type Naive1 followed by um, two curly brackets. And I've called that NF1. And then I'm going to fit the data. So we've read in our emergency department daily level data and um, called that ED daily, assigned it to an ED daily variable. So I'm going to fit that and then I'm going to predict over that 28 day horizon and store the results of that in um, NF1 preds. So if you want to see what um, these uh, functions do, if you, if you click in the brackets and press shift tab, 
Oh, it's not going to let me do it now. That's possibly because I'm in presentation mode. So there is a help file for this. Another, another way to access that is to say help naive one. Uh, and that will give you all the details about naive one, uh, what the methods are and what, and what they do. So let's run and fit that model. And then we see the predictions returned. So the last value in our time series was 184. So on that day, 184 adults attended the emergency department um, and it's just predicted ahead into the future um, as everything is 184. So let's visualize that and um, have a think about if that's a good forecast or not. Um, so I'm just calling the plot function off um, the ED daily data frame. Um, I'm also going to pass in this NF1 fitted values. I'm also going to plot that. So that's going to show what the in sample fitting looks like. So how does the model fit to the training data? And with naive one, you'll see it's just the same data just shifted across by one day. Um, then I'm calling this preds a series function. Uh, and on all that's doing is just helping us plot that NumPy array as a time series. Feel free to have a look how that works. And then I'm giving the, the, uh, the plot a legend. So here we go. So uh, in red, we've got our training data um, and then our blue dotted line, which is just the training data shifted across by one day is our model fitted to that data. And then our last data point, which was 184, is this forecast line here shooting off into the future. Um, so that doesn't look like a particularly good forecast, does it? However, um, it's a good baseline, it's a good benchmark, um, and we might bring in a more sophisticated method to see if we can beat that. So let's see if we can beat it with seasonal naive. Let's have a look how that works first. So import that from forecasttools.baseline. And then to create an instance of seasonal naive, you just call the S naive class and that in its initialization method, it has a, um, a parameter called period. So we're going to set that to seven because it's daily level data. And then we just fit the data and predict in exactly the same way. Uh, so here's our predictions. Again, it's a NumPy array. Um, so if we look at the first 12 of those, we can see that goes from 175 through to our last value, which was 184. And then that just repeats again there. So what it's done is it's just it's just shifted things over by 12 months. Uh, sorry, by seven days. Yeah, yeah, so of course that runs to there, uh, seven days, and then it repeats again by seven days. And then it repeats again. Apologies, getting confused with working with monthly data now. So let's plot the let's plot the chart. See what that looks like. Uh, well, on the face of it, that looks like a much more sensible forecast. But is it? Um, so we'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, so hopefully you'll remember that um, what we should really be aiming to do is return both a point forecast, but also some estimate of, un of uncertainty around that. Um, and we can do that in a statistical view of things using what's called a prediction interval. Um, so the predict method will also return a prediction interval for you by automatically if you want it to. And you just need to pass in um, return predict underscore int equals true. And then instead of just returning one NumPy array, it will return, return a tuple of NumPy arrays, two NumPy arrays. Uh, the first one is the predictions. The second one is the prediction intervals. And by default, by default, this returns 80% um, and 90% prediction intervals. Um, so if you only really wanted to return one set of prediction intervals, you could pass in um, this alpha value. Um, so the prediction interval is one minus alpha. Um, so to get an 80% prediction interval, you pass in 0.2, or minus 0.2 is 0.8. If we wanted um, the 80, 90, and 95% intervals, we would pass in three values, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.05. So let's run that. Um, so this is just a copy paste of that code. We're gonna create a seasonal naive object. We're gonna fit the training data to it. Uh, we're gonna create predictions and prediction intervals, and we're gonna return 
an 80% and a 95% prediction interval. And then we'll plot, we'll print out the, the y interval so you can see what those look like. So that in itself is an array of arrays. Um, so if we look at the first one of those, that is our 80% prediction intervals. Um, so you can see that that's a range of values between the first one between the first point is between 143 and 206. Um, if we then switch to the 95% intervals, you can see that that first point is, has a wider prediction interval of 127 through to 222, and that's because we're giving we're trying to give a bigger guarantee on what value we expect that that day in the future to hold. So again, another helper function here, uh, because it's a bit laborious to write this code yourself, um, to plot those prediction intervals. Um, so if we plot the prediction intervals, we're going to plot the um, emergency department daily level data, and we're going to only plot the last 60 days of the training data. Um, otherwise, it's quite a big chart. Um, we're going to plot our predictions, and we're going to plot our prediction intervals. So that looks like this. So remember, a point forecast is this center line here. Um, and what that is, is the mean of the forecast distribution. Okay, so you're forecasting a random variable in the future. And the point forecast is the mean of that random variable. The yellow uh, shaded region is the 80% prediction interval and the pink, pink purple, um, is the 95% prediction interval, or 90% I've written here, that's a mistake. So uh, that's great, that's how you produce a forecast, but you should really evaluate how good your forecast is, at least by doing a basic train test split of your data. So let's hold back the last 28 days of the data and forecast that using seasonal naive. So to do a train test split, well, there's, there's many ways to do it. Here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the length of my training data is the, the length of my um, data frame. So that's held in dot shape in the, the first element of that tuple, um, minus 28 days. And then the train and test split is I'm just, do, I'm just doing a bit of an array slicing here. Um, so the, the training set is from zero to the training length. And then the test set is from the end of the training data, which is the training length through to the end. You don't have to do it like that. You could just write the numbers in if you wanted to. Or because this is a pandas data frame with a date time index, you could use dates as well to split it. So let's have a look what we've got. So our training shape is 316 days and we've held back 28 days. So we're now going to predict those 28 days and measure the forecast error with seasonal naive. So what's really important is that we don't look at the test set. So if we are selecting a forecasting model, we must remember that we can bias those results by knowing what that data looks like. When it comes to the real forecasting, we, we can't do that because that data doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a real-time feed of data from the future. So we need to simulate that setting as best we can. And we do that by not looking at our test set. It's put somewhere safe. And then when we need it, we come back to it. So let's create our seasonal naive model and let's produce some predictions. So there's our predictions. Uh, and now what we're going to do is from forecast tools.metrics, we're going to import the forecast errors function. Um, so the forecast errors function is quite neat. It will produce a range of forecast errors for you. Um, so we're going to pass in our test data. That's the data we've kept safe and our predictions data. And that returns our forecast errors. So our first one, ME, is our mean error. And you can see straight away that that's really small compared to the other forecast errors that have been returned. And that's because the mean error in general is a poor measure of, for, of point forecast accuracy. So a couple of other things to observe is the mean absolute error and the root mean square error give, give similar values. 
and that's good. And their units are also sensible and easy for us to understand. Um, the mean square error gives this enormous value, which quite frankly is, isn't that useful um, as a decision maker. You can't really judge if that's useful or not. And that's because the units of it are squared. Number of de emergency departments attendance is squared which is not that useful. Um, then we also have some measures without any units and those are percentage errors. Uh, so here we've got our MAPE, which is 11.9% um, and it also outputs symmetric mean absolute percentage error, um, which is a slight tweak to MAPE, which, which gives a, in this case gives a very similar error. So there's about 12% error in general when you're predicting over 28 days into the future. Uh, so, if we very quickly do the same for Naive1 and have a look at the value that it produces, uh, this fit predict is just a, a shorthand for, for, for instead of writing two lines, fit and predict, I'm just writing one hand, one line here. Uh, okay, so that's NF1. Okay, so there's our flat forecast going into the future. And now what I'm gonna do is produce my forecast errors um, for using the naive one method. And our mean absolute percentage, so our mean absolute error is 23, whereas with, with our seasonal naive, it was 26. Same sort of rep um, result for our root mean squared error which is now 27 versus 32, and our MAPE has gone down to just under 11, whereas it was 12. So that's a bit of a surprising result, um, but in general, just because something looks visually like a good forecast, it doesn't necessarily mean that will bear out when you do the, when you do the maths. So it's always worth calculating your forecast error. Um, you should never just go off a visual look at the data to, to see if it's a um, a good fit and you should always at an absolute minimum use a holdout set.